for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but it means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes the content you like is very visually engaging and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. We are continuing with the Mitt the Family pattern. It is our August knit along and the link to the pattern is in the description box if you are interested in purchasing it and following it following along with us. Um, yesterday's video got cut short because the battery died. Uh, I did warn you guys though. I said, hey, my battery's on red. Can't guarantee I'm going to be able to make it through to the end of the video and lo and behold, exactly what happened. <laughs> and today is actually Monday night because yesterday was Sunday and I'm filming because um, I don't know what the rest, rest of the week's going to look like and I am behind on my filming to make sure that we finish out the week strong with the full seven days of content. So I'm going to try to do a couple um, in the next couple days to have ready for the rest of the week. Um, but here we are with our pattern. We are not very far yet, but we need to do 10 rounds before we can do anything really cool and fancy. And when we cut out, I just kept knitting, honestly, because it was easy enough for me just to to keep going for a little bit. So I only knit maybe two or three more stitches before I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. So we're going to just keep going here with what we had. Um, but I hope you guys are having a good day wherever you are. We had some crazy storms roll in toward the end of the day, like literally around 3 30, 4 o'clock. It got really dark, light started to flicker, and it was just, you know, Armageddon outside for a, a short while. Uh, the wind died down. There were some people who got uh, tornado warnings in their area. My phone didn't give me a tornado warning, but my partner's phone gave <clears throat> gave them a tornado warning, which is kind of weird because I'm like, we're in the same area. Uh, it got dark, lights flickered, the power went out in the kitchen of all places, and I lost internet for a little while, and I was on um, Teams. It's this Microsoft application that's part of like our software package that we have at my job and that's usually what we use to communicate quickly with each other and strangely I feel like it's becoming more of like a loosey-goosey email and people are deleting comments and things and I'm like hey we're losing records of our conversations if you could delete stuff versus email where, you know, both parties have to delete the message for it to no longer exist. But anyway, so I was in Teams and I said, hey, you know, my internet is probably going to go out. My lights are flickering. I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to finish my shift with internet. And yep, it cut out. And the person that I was supervising who was in the building, physically at the building, I told them, I'm like, my lights are flickering, a storm is coming, you can finish, you know, finish up your day, it's getting dark, I just looked up and it's dark out and bad things are happening so you might want to go home and they pretty much finished their day really fast and got, got to shelter and everything and then, you know, maybe 30, 40 minutes later, it was over. Of course, of course, it's just gonna be like, you know, all kinds of crazy hullabaloo for a good hour and then it looks like nothing happened. Like literally, the sun came out, birds were chirping, it's, it's not like dark dark, but you can see that the sun has set and the sky is like light, eh, like dark blue, but not pitch black yet. So. You know, we still had some good daylight out even after all of that happened. 
like, what in the world is going on? <sighs> and of course, I think it was yesterday that I mentioned when I was filming that, well, it might not have been yesterday's video, but it was definitely yesterday when I was filming where I mentioned that I went on a walk with my partner and they let me back in the house because it was going to rain then too. So it's just Midwest hurricane season. It's a mess. It's a mess if you live in this part of the United States and it's weird. I don't like it, but I'm here. I came out here for school and I've been stuck out here ever since. I am making an effort to get out of here. <laughs> oh, I don't like it, uh, but oh well. I'm sure I'm one of those grasses. Well, I take that back. I'm not grasses greener on the other side because I did grow up in the Pacific Northwest and I thoroughly enjoyed all of the seasons there. We had, you know, we got a little snow in the winter, we got some heat in the summer, uh, the rest of the time was a little bit rainy, but I could easily, you know, wear a nice heavy coat without having a scarf wrapped up to my eyeballs. I didn't need crazy galoshes, I didn't need crazy snow boots, like I was I was set, you know, with just like some hiking boots and a North Face coat or a Columbia coat or what have you, uh, Patagonia, whatever your brand of choice, and it was fine. I was fine. But here you need hat, scarf, mittens, um, thermal wear, extra layer of pants, scarf over your eyes wind guard, something to protect your eyes from the harsh, harsh wind and cold. It's, it's like, what, what kind of winter? I don't know. But my parents warned me, they said, paws and pearls, you're gonna go to the Midwest. We, we grew up there. We left that area for a good reason. We don't want to go back. It's going to be brutal summer, brutal winter. And I said, I don't care. If you don't want to go, that means good. That means you're not going to follow me. <laughs> I can high step it out of here and see you when I'm out of school. And that's how my, I felt. But looking back, I understand now why they didn't want to stay in this part of the town. And it's so weird to think of my parents as like native Midwesterners when they've lived in the Pacific Northwest for a good 40 years. Well, actually more than that, like almost 50 years, literally. And, but they, you know, actually, yeah, they, they've lived in the Northwest longer than they've been alive to live in the Midwest. But their roots are there. I mean, a lot of my relatives are still out. This part of town, or part of town, this part of the states, a uh, lot of them. So, like, the majority of my family is still in the Midwest. My distant relatives, my immediate cousins, um, uncles, aunts are still out this way. Not in the same state, but in the surrounding areas, so, hmm, they have made do. But anyway, it's just weird weather around here. Not consistent at all. The, the world is so big, it really does put things in per to perspective. And to just give you a heads up, I, I think I mentioned it briefly earlier, but I am knitting or I'm working in pattern for this 10 rounds and then I have to do a little bit of purling before I place my stitch markers to isolate the thumb gusset. 
and then I knit, well, I do pattern around, and I get to the gusset, and then I increase, and then I go around and I increase, and then I do that for 14 stitches of the gusset. That I remember, that I remember. Did you guys hear that? Did you just, just hear that um, beep? There was one person, um, was it Sunday night? No, no, because that was yesterday. Uh, I think it was Saturday night then. But somebody, it was really late. It was like 2 in the morning or something. I would know because I was awake. Um, it was really late at night. Oh, it might have been on Friday night then, because I think I slept all through... Yeah, because Saturday I went to bed around midnight. Well, Sunday morning, midnight. So yeah, it was Friday night then. Um, somebody on maybe a scooter or a motorbike or something like trudged through the neighborhood and was honking their horn and it was later than like normal rowdy person like 11 10 o'clock it was like upwards of very early in the morning when they did that and I'm wondering I'm like did they do that because they knew we were asleep were they trying to make sure um I don't have like a driveway I, I have a parking lot and there are other cars there I'm like were they honking because they didn't have lights on and they thought people would be uh, backing out of their parking stall at that hour and hit them I, I don't know I think they're just some young whippersnapper in the neighborhood who was just goofing off eh, people need something to do I just don't get that. That's one thing. I, you know, you always have that perspective when you're older, like, I was never like that when I was their age. What's going on with the youth? And I'm legit, like, so for it because I wasn't crazy. Um, the worst thing that, like, my friends and I did were, like, say curse words because our parents weren't around to say, don't say H-E double hockey sticks, um, you know, because that's a bad word. So we would say swear words, but we wouldn't, like, vandalize things. We wouldn't, we all had curfews. We weren't allowed to be out really late. Um, we didn't steal. We didn't harass people. We were always mindful to our elders talk to strangers, weren't trying to hook up with like creepy older guys. I was always a, a, a scared. I was always afraid of older guys. Um, just like anyone older than me was like scary. It didn't matter if they were like three years older or what. Like anyone who wasn't in my grade was older and therefore frightening. And I was just, I wasn't with it. So I didn't want to hang out with anybody older than me. Um, to be cool or whatever. So it was, it was just different then, I guess. And plus, we didn't have social media, so people weren't filming everything. Like, the worst was that I had a Polaroid and I would take dumb pictures of like my friends out of focus, crazy lighting, blurry, just dumb stuff and none of the pictures ever well okay I take them back some of them actually did come out pretty cute but for the most part like I didn't know what I was doing with my camera and there was not anything really incriminating to take a picture of because my friends and I were like goody two shoes and the worst we did was say curse words when our parents weren't around and that was about as hardcore as we got but I don't know riding around on your scooter, honking your horn, um, all this other salacious stuff that people do. Maybe it's just that everyone else was doing it and just my group of friends was not doing it, so I feel very 
out of the loop and unrelatable to the youth. I mean, I do I wish that parents would talk to their kids more because I wish I my parents talked to me more about stuff, but I am not a parent and I know that if I was, I would want to be very upfront with my kid about stuff so they wouldn't feel like they had to go behind my back because, you know, we were all kids once. Uh, though I was not a hardcore rebel like some of my uh, current, um, oh, they're not called counterparts, but the people, not a protege, no, I don't know, the word I'm trying to use to say, um, gosh darn it, not counterpart, I feel like it starts with a C. Contemporaries, right? They're contemporaries because they're uh, younger than me, but they're um, supposed to represent what I was when I was their age. I don't know. I'm probably using that word incorrectly, but the youth today needs some guidance. And the youth of my, my age group needed some too, because I knew some kids who would like do some really far out stuff, but my group, we weren't we weren't like that so I feel like more parents were cool with being honest with their kids then maybe there'd be less like weirdness happening because then their kids would know like cool you know me being a dummy out here because my parents aren't around actually isn't such a good idea because it's gonna bite me in the caboose one day Anyway, moral of the story is, please don't ride your motorbike around late at night honking your horn because it's dumb and you're not cool and nobody likes you being obnoxious, so take that. Uh, yeah, that's my lesson. <laughs> but yeah, we are making progress here. Oh, I just love working on this now with my my cheat, my circulars, they're making my life so much easier, though I'm pretty sure I've spoken too soon. As anything, I always have to like insert foot in mouth because Paws and Pearls jumped the gun and I was like, oh yeah, this will be fine. And then like three minutes later, the world's on fire because I did something wrong. And then I'm like, what's going on? And then it's like, no, it's just you. Or, you know, it's just me. It's it's not the pattern. It's me. I'm just a dum-dum. But that's okay. I like how I am making progress quickly. And I'm probably helping this go along because I'm rambling. <laughs> Oh, full minute, 11 minutes left, guys. I, it's just coming out of me like Montezuma's Revenge. I can't tell you. That's one thing. I don't know. It's still hot out. Don't be fooled by the fan not being on. It was hot, but I think because of the rainstorm, it kind of helped cool things off. Let me, let me take a moment to stop knitting. Let me tell you if I can, let me give you the current forecast or the current temp. What? Oh, this is interesting. Let's see. Okay, okay. It's almost 9. 71 degrees. Feels like 71 degrees. Today's high was 87. That's Fahrenheit. Um, humidity is 91%. Dew point is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So, stuffy outside. Yesterday, I think it was 99% humidity. It was stifling. Um, 
Let's see, tomorrow, it's not looking too bad. 82, a low of 62 in the evening. That's good. Ugh. It'll be 77 probably by the time, if I feel so, feel like it, go for a walk. Um, but we don't, it doesn't look like we have any more rain until Friday. There are some scattered showers Friday and Saturday and then it's hot again the rest of the week so yeah we're looking at some bogus weather just oh, awfulness am I I am yes I am purling all the way around here sometimes because I I think I knit a little tight. It's hard to tell if it's a pearl or not because the pearl bump is like right up against the knit so it looks like it's a pearl. So sometimes I just have to turn it over on the back to see what that looks like and I'm like oh okay okay I know what I'm doing. But yes I finally um this, I have this weird thing where, or maybe it's not weird, but pro, well, I'll let you decide. There's this thing I do, which I think kind of plays into my pseudo hoarder tendencies, where I'll have a lot of tabs open on my computer, and sometimes I'll have a bunch of windows with multiple tabs open on my computer, especially my work computer. I like to toggle. Um, usually in my office I have two monitors, one for looking at the thing as reference and then one for like inputting the data and it really helps me streamline my job. Um, but working from home I only have one monitor so I have to keep opening and closing. Now you think, oh Paws and Pearls, you know, Windows is so handy, you could just like snap your windows to each other and work from both at the same time. That is true if the data that I needed was in view in each window. It's not. So there's too much scrolling around that I have to do when each window is like side by side. So it's easier for me to have two monitors, but my desk space isn't large enough to have the two monitors that I use normally and one, I mean, I'm using my my home monitor but I have two at work and I'm like, oh, I could just go in one day and get them, but uh, I don't know. I've been working from home since March. You would think by this point I would have already made those adjustments to make myself feel more accommodated, but I'm also kind of lazy. <laughs> But with that being said, um, because I don't want to like forget anything, I will have lots of internet browser windows open at once. And for a while I had a lot of n yarn ones open, but I'm finally deciding that I'm just going to make a new um, bookmark folder so that I can save all of my yarn. And I wanted to let you guys in on this. Uh, well, it's not a secret, but it's kind of like a dream of mine, and I'll tell you in the next episode, because the next episode is coming up, like, literally tomorrow. Well, when you see this, it'll be up tomorrow, and I'll continue on with that, because then I'll have more time to talk about it. But here we are, finishing another round. We have... Oh, I still have it open. What did I do? I think I'm on seven. Mm -hmm. I drew a line through here and I have no idea what it was going through. Okay, yeah. so I'm on seven. I just finished seven, so I have two more. Right, one, two, three. Maybe. Well, wait, wait, wait. Okay, yes. That's. Knit that. One, two, three, four. 
Yes, that's what I have. <laughs> so you'll see, I'll stop for the pretty thumbnail. And this will be where we pick up tomorrow. So thank you so much, and we will ramble on some more next time. Bye.